So one of the most uh, requested things on the channel is, is Cooper. So this is my golden retriever Cooper. You guys want to see him. Here he is, what's that? Can you see that? So much dog hair, so much dog hair. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at a gaming keyboard sent over by uh, the guys over at BZ Future. Now I've never used a keyboard from BZ Future before and initially when they reached out and asked if I would you know, be interested in taking a look, I said yeah, but then really didn't give it much, much thought other than that. However though, once it showed up and I got hands on it, I was like, okay. Initially, you know, the first thing you do when you pick up a keyboard is like how, how well is it built? And I was, I'm happy to say that there's like little to no flex in this keyboard, at least in the deck itself, especially when typing. And I was surprised because after that, I looked up what well, you know the materials this thing was made of, and I was surprised not to see any steel or aluminum. So it's all plastic, but it feels sturdy. But it wasn't until I plugged it in that I was like, okay, now you got my attention. I mean, let me plug it in for you. Look at that. Now, RGB keyboards are far from new, but the quality and like the differences between models and manufacturers is like huge. And in my opinion, the CK80, especially with that edge trim, is pretty high up there when it comes to keyboard RGB lights. The RGB lights around the edge of the keyboard give it a real, I don't know, just a real nice look, and especially when it's on your desk or on your mouse pad, it gives like a nice glow. Just an added touch that a lot of other keyboard manufacturers aren't doing you know a lot of everybody a lot of almost everybody does backlight rgb but not many do anything with like this edge lighting and if you're an rgb lover like myself i know you're gonna like it now controlling this awesome rgb isn't super intuitive to, to say the least so let me explain it so if you decide to get this keyboard um you'll basically know how it works you'll be able to not fumble around with it like i did when i first got it first to access the keyboard standard lighting modes hold the fn key when pressing either you know the keys one through five. This will allow you to enter one of the standard lighting, you know, lighting modes. One, two, three, four, and five are all different lighting modes. Once in those standard lighting modes, hold the FN key and use the insert and delete key to scroll through um, all the color options. So you can enter whatever standard mode you'd like, and then you can also set the color of that standard mode by doing that insert or delete key. As for the edge lighting, you have four modes controlled by holding the FN key and then pressing the home key. Uh, that's how you basically scroll through which mode you want to you know, use. You got rainbow, color wave, static, and breathing. When you're in static or breathing, you can then use the FN key. Um, you basically hold that down again and then select a color by using page up. To access the lighting effects, hold down the FN key and then press the print screen button. And this will help you, you can use that to scroll through the different lighting effects. If you'd like to set the color of each individual key, which can be done, you need to hold the FN key and then press six to enter custom mode. When you're in custom mode, press and hold the FN key again and press the pause key. And then when you, when you do this, you're gonna notice that the FN and the pause key kind of start flashing. And while they're flashing, you can basically press any key on the keyboard and it'll basically set the colors. So everything will be black, then you can press a key, it'll turn red, if you press it again, it just scrolls through the colors, and you basically do that whatever key you want, as many times as you need to set whatever custom color you want on the keyboard. Once you have all the keys set how you'd like them, use the FN key and press the pause button again to set that, and then that becomes your locked in theme for key six, um, and it's basically just saved to the keyboard. And if you ever want to clear that, you hold the FN key and press escape, and that's gonna basically wipe out all that uh, work you did, setting all those keys up so you can basically have a clean slate to start all over. And if for some reason you hate RGB and you bought this keyboard, you can ba you can basically turn all of it off by pressing the FN key and then hitting the screen lock button and then basically on or off. Oh, side note. So on the side here, you're gonna have, you have a rotary, basically a rotary button. And if you're like me, that's awesome. So basically this is set as default. Well, first it changes the, the brightness of your LEDs, but it also can control the volume. And if you used one, as long as I have, so my other keyboard that I use every day, uh, has a volume button and I don't think I can get by without having a volume scroll wheel. So this is awesome. And then it's awesome that you can also change the intensity of the LEDs from off all the way up to the bright as they go. The keyboard is finished with a black and silver theme and has 104 keys and a full numpad, which is awesome if you're like me. The PBT keycaps are, they feel solid. They don't feel cheap. And they're also finished in a matching two-tone color finish. The keyboard size is 46.4 centimeters long by 15.1 centimeters wide by 3.84 centimeters high. The keyboard uses a standard USB interface and compatible with consoles like PS4. And even, you know, I've noticed while playing Modern Warfare that there's a lot more 
console players out there than I thought using mouse and keyboard. And it's just awesome that now PC players like ourselves have cross-play in games like Modern Warfare. But if you want to use mouse and keyboard on your console, here you go. But going back to the switches, there are three options, two of which are mechanical. So you have the gold switch and the silver switch. And then you have a third option, the option I chose. The third option is a Zeus optical switch, and that's what I have here today. And for an optical switch, especially if you're used to using mechanical switches like myself, using an optical switch, especially this one, is actually a pretty good, it's a pretty good switch. The tactile, you know, bump and the audible click is very satisfying to type on. Everything feels precise. I didn't have any issues with mistyping or anything like that. Everything felt great. But at the time that I selected that switch, I didn't know that it was that good. What I did know is that an optical switch, at least this one, was waterproof. And I was like, wait a minute. Are you saying that this might be waterproof? Now, if you go on the BZ Future website and you look at the CK80, it does say that the optical switch on the CK, CK80 is IP68 rated. And if you know my channel, you know that I can't just read something like that and say, well, that's cool. I wonder if it works. I, I have to try it out. Behold, the, uh, the weirdest thing I've probably ever made. So this, a lot of you tried to guess what this was when I posted a picture of this in my community tab. Uh, some of the good ones were a paper towel holder, uh, a toilet paper roll, I thought that was pretty funny. But this is an ergonomic water-cooled keyboard stand. Let me show you. So said waterproof keyboard sits in here like so, and then we pour water on it with our Nice little wish.com pump and little water cooling loop here. And we're gonna see, <laughs> we're gonna see how waterproof this is. I know from talking to BZ Future that this little rotary switch, uh, not so waterproof. So we're gonna try to avoid getting that wet. But I have a little towel down because this is gonna get messy. But essentially what we got here is a four piece stand. So like I said, my printer can only do so big so I have a a stand that I broke in half and then a top stand. So this bottom part here is basically all slanted downwards to a little little drain in the bottom that goes into the reservoir and then back out into this top bar that has a bunch of little holes in the bottom of it that basically spray the keyboard with water and then it drains through the keyboard out the drain holes in the bottom back into the catch. And that's pretty much it. I did print this out of a clear so that I'd use my normal PLA plus but I have a clear or a transparent filament and it did a really good job. Also, pro tip, I don't know what I did with it. Glue and PLA together. A lot of you guys said super glue. Um, I've used um, hot glue, but what I tried this time that worked really good is I have some Weldon 4 that I used. Uh, basically, you use it to grill or glue together acrylic, and it actually worked really good, especially on this clear PLA Plus. So, just let you know, and it's it made it basically waterproof too. All none of these none of these seams leaked or anything like that, but. 
Either way, let's uh, let's see how goofy this is to type with. So let me log in real quick. This is weird. So essentially the first round of testing will be, um, if we spray with water, does it just break immediately? So that's what we're gonna try. If it survives that, then we're going to move on to uh, typing while we, while we water cool our fingers. So let's see how it works. All right, so the big question here is does, can we still type? Oh, that's, that's weird. So I have OBS going, so let's just see what we can do. Seems like it's working. The hardest part is not making mistakes. Water's so cold. Woo. All right, so we proved it. It's, I mean, it is waterproof. We typed while this was going on. Everything worked. So let me, we get this all shut down now. Cleaned up. Actually, just look at it for a minute. This is very interesting. Well, let me get this all cleaned up, turned off, and dry this out, and we'll see. Uh, just make sure it still works after we, we've done all this to it. So, be right back. I'm back. Things are dry, and everything is working, and it's it's quite amazing. So, yeah, not everybody's going to spray their keyboard with water while they're gaming, but, you know, this actually does have some sort of usefulness to it. Uh, I'm sure you, I know I have, have spilled something on a keyboard in the past. Uh, normally it's like some sort of sticky pop or juice or something and then your, your keyboard might live, but it's, it's always sticky afterwards. But with, like with something like this, you could, well obviously spilling on it would not hurt it, but then you could take it and literally just run it underwater, get all that sugar and everything out of it and then you wouldn't have any issues with your keys sticking in the end. And th I'm, I'm impressed, so. If you're looking for a keyboard that sounds good, types good, keys work well, um, waterproof, RGB, well then the Motospeed CK80 from uh, BZ Future is what you need. So one more thing before we head out, if we head over to BZ Future's website, you can see this is the Motospeed CK80 that I was using. There's the Zeus optical switches. You can see BZ Future. Uh, they sell a little bit more than just keyboards, looks like. Right now they got some sort of promo going for software. But anyway, if you head over to the website, you click buy now, and then you enter the code BZMH, you should get 10% off that keyboard. So there you go. So if you want a discount, you want a good keyboard with great RGB, head over to BZ Future, pick yourself up one, use the code BZMH, and we'll see you next time.